Elegy written in a country churchyard by Thomas Gray. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lea. The plowman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Say from that yonder ivy-mantled tower the moping owl does to the moon complain of such as wandering near her secret bower molest her ancient solitary reign. Beneath those rugged elms the yew trees shade, where leaves the turf in many a molding heap, each in his narrow cell forever laid, the rude forefathers of the hamlet sleep. The breezy call of incense breathing morn, the swallow twittering from the straw belt shed, the cock's shrill clarion, or the echoing horn, no more shall rouse them from their lowly bed. For them no more the blazing hearth shall burn, or busy housewife ply her evening care. No children run to list their sire's return, or climb his knees for the envied kiss to share. Let not ambition mock their useful toil, their lone homely joys and destiny obscure, nor grandeur here with a disdainful smile the short and simple annals of the poor, the boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, and all that beauty, all that wealth e'er gave, awaits alike the inevitable hour, the paths of glory lead but to the grave. Nor you, ye proud, impute to these the fault, if memory o'er their tomb no trophies raise, where through the long-drawn aisle and fretted vault, the pealing anthem swells the note of praise. Can storied urn or animated bust back to its mansion call the fleeting breath? Can honor's voice provoke the silent dust or flattery soothe the dull, cold ear of death? Perhaps in this neglected spot is laid some heart once pregnant with celestial fire, hands that the rod of empire might have swayed or wake to ecstasy the living rhyme, but knowledge to their eyes her ample page, rich with the spoils of time, did ne'er unroll. Chill penury repressed their noble rage, and froze the genial current of the soul. Full many a gem of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen, and waste its sweetness on the desert air. Some village Hamden, that with dauntless breast, the little tyrant of his fields withstood. Some mute, inglorious Milton here may rest, some Cromwell, guiltless of his country's blood. The applause of listening senates to command, the threats of pain and ruin to despise, to scatter plenty o'er a smiling land, and read their history in a nation's eyes. Their lot forbade, nor circumscribed alone, their growing virtues, but their crimes confined, forbade to wade through slaughter to a throne, and shut the gates of mercy on mankind. The struggling pangs of conscience, truth to hide, to quench the blushes of ingenious shame, or heap the shrine of luxury and pride, with incense kindled at the muses' flame. Far from the main crowd's ignoble strife, their sober wishes never learn to stray. Along the cool sequestered vale of life, they kept the noiseless tenor of their way. Yet even these bones from insult to protect, some frail memorial still erected high, with uncouth rhymes and shapelets sculpture decked, implores the passing tribute of a sigh. Their name, their years spelt by the unlettered muse, the place of fame and elegy supply, and many a holy text around she strows that teach the rustic moralist to die. For who to dumb forgetfulness a prey, this pleasing anxious being e'er resigned, left the warm precincts of the cheerful day, nor cast one longing, lingering look Behind. On some fond breast the parting soul relies, 
some pious drops the closing eye requires. Even from the tomb the voice of nature cries. Even in our ashes live the wanted fires. For thee, who mindful of the unhonored dead, doth in these lines their artless tale relate. If chance, by lonely contemplation led, some kindred spirit shall inquire thy fate. Haply, some hoary-headed swain may say, of oft have we seen him at the peep of dawn, brushing the, with hasty steps the dews away to meet the sun upon the upland lawn. There at the foot of yonder nodding beech, that wreathes its old fantastic root so high, his listless length at noontide would he stretch and pour upon the brook that babbles by. Hard by you would, now smiling as in scorn, muttering his wayward fancies he would rove, now drooping, woeful, wan, like one forlorn, or crazed with care, or crossed with hopeless love. One morn I missed him on the customed hill, along the heath and near this favorite tree. Another came, nor yet beside the rill, nor up the lawn, nor in the wood was he. The next, with dirges due and sad array, slow through the churchway path we saw him borne, approach and read, for thou canst read, the lay great on the stone beneath yon aged thorn. The epitaph, here rest his head upon the lap of earth, a youth to fortune and to fame unknown. Fair science frowned not on his humble birth, and melancholy marked him for her own. Large was his bounty and his soul sincere, heaven did a recompense as largely sin. He gave to misery all he had, a tear. He gained from heaven, t'was all he wished, a friend. No farther seek his merits to disclose, or draw his frailties from their dread abode. There they alike in trembling hope repose, the bosom of his Father and his God. Thank you.